webinar series of 21st century teachers with the theme Teaching in the New Normal. The goal of this series is to make teachers adapt and become relevant under the new normal. We would like to remind everyone on the following. A certificate of participation will only be given to those who will stay through the entire session and completely answer the evaluation assessment afterwards. A second certificate, certificate of completion, will only be given to those who will join us for the entire series. Thank you. Before we begin today's webinar, let us give respect to the singing of the Philippine National Anthem, followed by a short prayer. put ourselves in the holy presence of God. Father in heaven, always merciful and giver of life, we humbly ask that you bless each one of us in the speakers, program committees, guests, and participants. Inspire us to make better decisions as we incorporate what we will learn in our future. Thank you for the infinite blessings and countless opportunities. Lord, today as we start our activity, may we always be grateful to learn new things. Shed the light of your wisdom and bless each one, especially our speakers, as they will share their knowledge to 
to us. And with your mercy and grace, your peace and utmost understanding, shine and dwell unto us. Almighty God, accompany each one and help us concentrate for us to gain more knowledge as we listen attentively. This we ask in your name. Amen. Now, for the actual learning, let us welcome Dr. Rubilin C. Pastrano to talk about her topic, Project Teach Tech, How to Teach with Technology. Dr. Pastrano is a Microsoft Certified Educator, a Microsoft Education Ambassador, Master Trainer, and a Microsoft Innovative Education Expert. All right. Have an amazing and awesome morning, everyone. So I'm glad to be here with you today. And as we all know, one of our main goals as educators is to foster the desire for le learning in those we teach. So we are so blessed that we are educators. Uh, we can influence uh, our learners. With that, there are no time or age restrictions in learning. Okay, the vital need only is the want and willingness to learn. So I appreciate all the educators who are with us today because I know you are very, very willing to learn. So with that, amidst the crisis that we are having right now, no doubt technology is a great tool and way to achieve learning. So as an empowered and innovative teachers, our students or our learners also will learn differently and technology allows educators to accommodate unique learning styles on a case by case basis. And yes, technology is there to help us, but still, um, teachers will be as important as ever. So uh, once again, have a great, awesome, and amazing morning. Magandang umaga sa lahat. Maayong buntag sa Visayas at Mindanao. So I'm so glad to be here with you. So with that, I let me share my screen. Okay. So this is a very great opportunity uh, to all of us, not just uh, for the speakers, but also to all of us, all right? Okay, so again, I'm Robilin Tabardo Pastrano. Right now, I'm in Laplapu City, Cebu. So uh, this webinar is free. Okay, this is free, hosted by the 21st Century Teachers to help teachers adapt. And our topic is all about Project Teach Tech and how to teach with technology. So bear with me as we end until 11 a.m., all right? And more activities this afternoon. So of course, um, as a presenter, researcher and educators, we need to recognize the sources of our information, okay? I respect intellectual property and we need to be, uh, uh, we need to respect that one. So as uh, digital utilizers, we need to consider the references or the sources of the information that we are giving. So now I will be giving you an activity Okay, so for this first activity, I want you to go to your browser or to your mobile phone, uh, type www.menti.com and use the code 300253. Again, with the use of your, if you're going, if you're using laptop, go to your browser like 
uh, Google Chrome, Edge, Safari, or MacBook, or any browser that you're having. And if you're using mobile phone, uh, you can go to www.menti.com and use the code 300253. Now, uh, I want to get your ideas on what are the vital requirements in effective teaching with technology, all right? So let me share the actual uh, activity that I will be giving you this time in Mentimeter.com. All right, so I hope you can uh, access this one. You don't need to sign up. All you have to do is to go to www.menti.com and use the code 300253. Yes, I received now a response. Stable internet connection. Yes. Yes. If we are using a technology, uh, does it mean that we need internet connection all the time? Okay, we will answer that in a while. Yes. Right now, I have eight respondents. Okay, so thank you so much for participating. I hope everyone will join. Okay, will respond to this question so that your ideas will be recognized. Okay. okay. Now, again, what are the vital requirements in effective teaching with technology? So I can see here the highlighted words, internet connection, gadgets, knowledge. All right. Yes, yes, yes. For the education I am using now the Mentimeter.com, uh, utilizing the type test of Word Cloud. So with this, I can have an initial idea okay, about your uh, stored knowledge or it could be your perception about vital requirements in effective teaching with technology. Wow, I have now 115 respondents. So as you can see, the uh, word cloud changes from one uh, time to the other because this platform is very interactive and very engaging in the part of the participants this morning. So if you will utilize this in your uh, classes, either face-to-face -face or online or distance learning online, you can use this one, not just for teachers, but also for uh, presenters or if you have a speaking engagement. So I can see here highlighted words like internet connection, knowledge, gadgets, yes. All right, laptop. I can also say word computer literacy, all right? But as you notice, there are highlighted words. So these words are very common among you, okay? So let's wait for the others. Let's give them enough time for them to experience this activity, all right? So what I like with this activity is that uh, aside from uh, having an immediate feedback from my participants or from my students, it is interactive and very colorful as well. So with this platform, you can develop the uh, vocabularies of your learners or they can explore more. But in one device, they can only submit one response. Okay. But uh, for the information of everyone as well, um, if you will utilize this platform, uh, you don't need to worry if how many participants uh, are you having because uh, it will accept unlimited responses. And this uh, platform is also free. I'm utilizing the free account. 
So right now, the highlighted words are knowledge. I can see internet connection. Yes. Gadget. Still. So later, uh, you will know what are the vital requirements and effective teaching with technology. Okay. Thank you so much for your responses. Okay. So this time I got 265 responses. Okay. Yes. Then another information about this platform. This is not just exclusive for English uh, language or English words. You can also submit Filipino words. So for those teachers handling Filipino subjects or subjects uh, uh, in which the medium of instruction is Filipino, it's not a problem. Okay. Even if you are using the uh, mother tongue language, this is also able to accept those words. So it's really innovative to utilize this uh, platform for your activities, uh, whether it's in the classroom or in your virtual classroom. Yes, I got now 311 respondents. All right. So for those who are done, please stand by because uh, we need to pave the way for those who have not able to submit the responses yet. So let's focus on the question. What are vital requirements and effective teaching with technology? So right now I can see the highlighted words, internet connection, gadgets, yes. Knowledge, right, so, okay, computer, internet, yes, oh, sorry, yes, 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 343, wow, hmm, I can see words like um, laptop, strong internet connection, technology, cell phone, yes. I can also see um, computer, computer literacy. Okay, see you have different ideas. Same with our learners. Our learners are varied. They have varied uh, learning experiences. Same with us educators. We have uh, varied exposure, but this question have different meaning to all of us. So in your, in your end, we're going to give at least three, at least three vital requirements and effective teaching with technology. All right, so I will wait until 9.25 so that others can experience the platform. Okay, so in participating activity like this, patience is really a virtue, okay? So sometimes, we can experience poor internet connection or bad network. Sometimes it really fails, but still we need to have that uh, positive outlook, right? Let's increase our patience. Let's just be stretched, but not stressed so that you will stay beautiful and handsome. Okay, yes. 921 right now. So at this time, I got 402 respondents. So until now, the highlighted words are internet connection, knowledge, gadgets. Okay, let's see. In my presentation, I only focus on three 
vital requirements and effective teaching with technology. All right. Thank you so much for participating. Okay. So for those who are uh, done submitting your uh, answers, you can explore there. So if you want to make an account, you can go to mentimeter.com. Yes. Sign up for free. I'm not advertising this platform, uh, but I really like it since I have been using it for several years already. All right, so thank you so much. Time check, 9.22. Three minutes left for the others to submit their responses. Okay. So again, the highlighted words are computer, internet connection, knowledge, gadgets, computer literacy. Yes, patience. I can see the word patience. Mobile phone, uh, innovative, fast internet connection. Yes, no doubt. We need fast internet connection, especially if you are if we are having synchronous online uh, teaching. But let's see later. What really is the core in teaching with technology? So time check, 9.23, two minutes left. All right. Wow. Yes. Thank you so much. 467 respondents. Hmm. So this platform, you can use this for motivation and motivation part of your lesson, or you can also use this in the presentation part, or you can also use this in evaluation or for assessment. So it's up to you on where to put this uh, type of activity in your lesson proper. All right. Yes, 484 respondents. I think majority have submitted their uh, outputs for this. Okay, 9.24. We have one minute left. Oh, yes. 499. Yes, at least... My goal is at least 500 respondents. So for the information of everyone again, uh, if you will ask uh, how many people can send their response for this activity, the answer is unlimited, no limit. Yes, 509 respondents. Time check 924, a few seconds left. All right, so 9.25. So thank you so much for those who have submitted your responses. And I'm sorry for those who oh, were not able to submit yet. This time, let me proceed to the uh, presentation. Okay, so here, this is the question. What are the vital requirements in effective teaching with technology? Right. So here, these are the three vital requirements. First, mindset. Okay, second, model. And third, motto. Now, have you submitted these words? Okay, well, let us uh, tackle all these vital requirements. Why do you think these are crucial in teaching with technology, All right? Now I have this slide. I got this one from the Rice Filipinas of Microsoft Philippines Education Summit 
that was a virtual activity last July 10. Okay, last July 10, 2020. No, it's not July, June, sorry. Okay, I stand corrected. The activity of Rice Filipinas was uh, done last June 10, 2020 at 9 a.m. So according to Satya Nadella okay, of Microsoft, as COVID-19 impacts every aspect of our work and life, we have seen two years worth of digital information or digital transformation in two months. Yes. That's why since April until now, educators, teachers, administrators are very busy attend attending webinars, all right? Okay, we have a lot of activities to fill the gap because of this pandemic, COVID-19, which is a global problem, okay? This is not just a local as, uh, concern, so we need to do something with this right so we need to identify the problem okay as 21st century educators we already identify the problem especially this time the problem is COVID-19 okay, it makes people sick all over the world okay not just physically but psychologically People have experienced anxiety and some uncomforts in their lives, all right? So according also to the uh, country general manager of Microsoft Philippines, Andres Portola, okay, in his talk also during the uh, Microsoft Rice Filipinas, normal has changed, yes. We can't deny it, normal has changed. So since it changes, since normal change, okay, we need to have our mindset not to be fixed, okay? Because most of us this time, we have fixed mindset like, I am scared and worried about what is happening. It is out of control. Can we start our classes on August 24 for DepEd, all right? Or how about for private school, okay? So we have that feeling of anxiety. We are scared and we are so uncertain, all right? But we need to have that proper mindset, okay? Let's forget about having fixed mindset, but let's have instead growth mindset now. This growth mindset, as we all know, this is the work of Carol Dweck, of course. And let's have this one. Let's claim I can stay well informed about the situation to understand how it impacts on me and my family. So we are very concerned with our family, not just with our family, but with our uh, course, the economy of our country, okay? Not just the economy of our country, but the global uh, economy. So with that, we need to fix, or we need to forget those fixed mindset, but let's have this growth mindset. Let's advocate with this, all right? Because if we have this growth mindset, we can proceed to innovation mindset. Like, I can use the information or I can use the technology. I can use the information I learned to make the most of this situation. Now is not the right time to panic. Now is not the right time to be scared, but now is the right time for us to be well informed, for us to be positive and to move on. Okay, let's move on. Then with that growth mindset, Still, according to uh, Andres Ortola, the country manager of Microsoft Philippines, whether we like it or not, this is undeniable. Normal has changed. Yes. So with that mindset, our mindset needs to change. Yes, we need to change. So from not it all before to learn it all. Yes, we can learn. We 
have the capacity to learn. So we need to be grateful with that. So this webinar, this free webinar is a blessing to all of us, all right? This is for free. And if we will just open our mind, our heart to accept the reality and move on, we can, uh, we can uh, work together and we can fight COVID-19 together, all right? So now, again, this is taken from the Rice Filipinas clip, okay, from Sean Turney, the director of K-12 Strategy, director of Asia Pacific. So before, uh, education is uh, trying hard to, uh, to go after technology. Yes, even in our classrooms before, I'm teaching in Science and Technology Education Center, but we don't have that enough technology uh, tools, okay? I mean, we don't have that enough tools that we can use for teaching and learning, all right? But this time, everything changes. So let's start with our mindset. So here, let's take it one by one. Again, this is from Dr. Carol Dweck, okay? Let's overcome having fixed mindset. Because when we talk about fixed mindset, this is the belief that skills, intellect, and talents are set and unchangeable. This is me. You cannot change me. Nobody can change me. Something like that. I am the most powerful person in the world. I am. <laughs> I am the most influential person. Okay? Something like that. Okay? Being fixed mindset. Like... We are fixed with our desires. We are fixed with our skills. We are fixed with our effort. We are fixed with our setbacks, feedback, and even uh, we have problem with our talented peers, right? Why? Because we have problem with our mindset, first of all. Okay? Now, instead of saying, I'll stick to... I'll stick to what I know, either I'm good at it or not. Why not change it to growth mindset? Like believing that skills, intellect, talents can be developed through practice and perseverance. I know very well before there are some educators who are very negative when it comes to technology. We don't like to use laptop or any devices okay, for ICT integration. But this time, uh, I think this is the right time for us to wake up, okay, to stretch more, like uh, basically from our desire, like I want to learn new things. I am eager to take risk, yes. So I know let's, we can start with this desire, okay? Then from that desire, uh, so what I have said before I started, the very vital thing that we need to have is the willingness to learn. Again, the willingness to learn. And if you have that willingness to learn, you can jump to your desire. I want to learn new things. I am eager to take risks, all right? Then, how about our skills? Yes, no one is best in all aspects in our lives, all right? Maybe we are good at this, but we are not good at something okay that's why we need to collaborate with others we need to connect to other people so that's why 21st century uh, uh, page initiated this activity so that our skills will be developed okay not just for technical skills but also uh, from our uh, emotional psychological and all aspects in our lives so that we will become a whole being. So instead of saying, let's find the way it is, there is nothing to change. There is nothing to change in my skills. I have enough skills and this is all. Instead of saying that, why not ask ourselves, is this really my best work? Is this really my best work? What else can I improve? Have you ever asked that to yourself? What else can I improve? 
if I'm not good in uh, speaking my national language, I'm not good in writing English. So just give me a time, just give me time, okay? Or if you're not good in utilizing the devices available, yes, we need to give you time and we need to collaborate for us to develop those skills. Okay, so again, let's ask ourselves, is this really my best trick? What else can I improve? Then let's proceed to the F word. Sometimes we may say like, this is a waste of time. This webinar is a waste of time. There's a lot to figure out. Okay, this is nothing. I, I, I know everything, something like that. But with our effort, why not say, I know this will help me. Yes, I have heard this uh, topic many times, but maybe this time I can learn something new. I know this will help me even though it is difficult. Okay, so this afternoon, I will be presenting some tools with the best practices on how to use it in teaching with technology. So we can have that uh, positive mind in having our effort like, I know this will help me even though it is difficult. Yes, who knows? It's just easy for you if you will just try. Then how about the setbacks? Like if you have that fixed mindset, you might say it's easier to give up. I'm really not smart. Okay, someone is better than me. I'm old enough to study all that stuff. Okay, just give it to the younger one, something like that, right? That could be a possible set box. But why not say, I'll use another strategy. My mistakes help me learn, okay? My mistakes help me learn, yes. No one is perfect, okay? We can't commit mistakes, but we can overcome those one okay, for us to improve, for us to be mature, okay? Now, how about for feedback? If you have that fixed mindset, you might say, this work is boring. No one likes to do it. Oh, I don't like to handle uh, modular instruction or uh, distance online learning because for me, it's boring and it's just a waste of time. My internet connection is so bad network is so bad but why not uh why not say i recognize my weakness and i know what to fix okay i recognize my weakness and i know what to fix now how about with our talented peers do we have problem with them okay sometimes we feel uh insecure to them okay so if you have that fixed mindset you might say it's easy for him or her because they were born smart. No, it's not that. If you have that growth mindset, you might say, I wonder how they did it. Let me try to figure it out. Yes, we can have this one, dear uh, educators, my fellow teachers. This is the crucial time for us to set our mindset. That set our mindset. But it's not just about this, but uh, I have uh, this one. This is also taken from the Rice Filipinas. I am very grateful since I'm one of the Microsoft Education Ambassadors. So I attended the event online, and there were also maybe among you have joined that. So I always uh, keep watching the video on YouTube because it reminds me a lot of things. So in changing our mindset, uh, before, the most popular line is lifelong learning. In fact, in my Facebook account, I have that in my profile, I am a lifelong learning, learner, sorry. I am a lifelong learner, all right? So again, this uh, was taken from the Rice Filipinas uh, Summit. But I have learned in that summit, like uh, this time, it's not just about lifelong learning, but life-wide learning. Thank you so much to Sean Turney, the director of K-12 Strategy, director of Asia Pacific of Microsoft Education. So 
I have learned, I have learned new, new thing, life-wide learning. So I claim it now like I am not just a lifelong learner, but I'm also a life-wide learner. So as educators, we need to adapt this mindset. Okay, now from Shanterni again, we need to shift to learning like beyond the classroom. Okay, borderless classroom. In Microsoft, we have been doing the Skype in a classroom uh, in the previous years. We have been doing that Skype in a classroom, connecting to international educators. Like we can enjoy virtual field trip and we can invite speakers and some other international educators okay, to speak in behalf of our learners or to our fellow educators for us to collaborate with each other. So it's beyond the classroom. But now there are some opportunities for us to teach with technology beyond the classroom. So we call it borderless classroom. So here, mindset change is not about picking up a few pointers here and there. It's about seeing things in a new way, okay? Seeing things in a new way. But this is not just uh, that new way, but this is something for us to become productive and effective educators amidst the pandemic, okay? Even if you are just staying at home or staying in the office, we can reach out to our learners. So again, from know it all, thinking or mindset, let's shift to learn it all. I can learn it all because I'm very willing to learn. I am an open-minded person, so it helps. Then again, from the Rice Filipinas activity, uh, here, so, uh, student agency. So with this, setting bold goals. Yes, the educator or the teacher and the student must set their goals for more, especially our leaders and our administrators. And with that, we need to have also uh, initiating student-driven action, okay? We need to initiate student-driven action. And with that, reflection and empowerment with growth mindset. So again, the first vital requirement for us to have an effective teaching with technology is mindset, all right? Mindset. Then, with that mindset that we are having, okay? So first M, mindset. Making shift from, no, I can't, okay? This is very popular before, like, no, I can't do it. I can't make it, but let's shift to, yes, I can. Yes, I will. Yes, I can. Yes, we can do it together, okay? We can excel as one, one depth at one Filipinas, all right? So welcoming change and putting aside ideal perfection in favor of an attitude that embraces not just lifelong learning, but life-wide learning. So yes, I know you have that one. And yes, we can have that. But before I will proceed to the next slide, let me share to you, aside from mindset, uh, as an educator, uh, I feel grateful if I feel uncertainty or anxiety, okay? Why? Because that's the very uh, time that indicates me that it, this is not just by my own mind, okay? What I learned or what can I know more is not just about me, not just by my own mind, but it takes also a divine intervention for me to have that positive mindset, okay? That's why I always believe in what the Bible says, like I can do all things 
through Christ, which strengtheneth me. All right. So as believers, as Christian, we need to have that one. We need to anchor. We need to anchor our belief to our God Almighty. And with that, it's easy for us to have that growth mindset. Okay? Yes. Then second, the second vital requirement is model. Okay? Why model? Because this can guide us. All right? So the first model that I want you to ponder on is the Deming cycle. Okay. This Deming cycle is also known as PDCA okay, by Paul Arvison W. Edwards Deming uh, way back 1950s. Yes, this is very popular when it comes to continuous improvement. Okay. Basically, it started in the industry, all right, but the education department also embraced this one. Like we need to plan first, all right? Then do, okay, meaning implement the plan that you're having. So I appreciate this days, the Department of Education is very busy about the uh, continuity learning plan that to address the learning must continue plea of our department secretary, Dr. Bionis, okay? Then everything must not be just a plan in a sheet of paper or in a digitized format, but we need to do something. We need to implement, all right? Like this series of webinars that we are having in various agencies uh, to prepare us for the new normal. So we must be grateful with that. Then after doing something, we need to check if it's effective or not, or if it contributes something to uh, make that learning possible and we need to act also. Then after acting, we need to evaluate again if there's something happening to plan. So this is a cycle, an ending cycle, uh, so that there is a continuous improvement, All right? Now, another thing is this. Uh, when we plan, how should it be, okay? So uh, I'm so grateful again with a, uh, uh, schools division superintendent and some other educational leaders who really guide their, the school heads or some other uh, people behind to do the continuity plan, okay? Then after having the plan, what do we do and how? So there are some actions undertaken already and for the checking, what has been achieved? Okay, we need to have that follow up. We need to get the feedback in okay, what has been achieved so far from April to June. Okay, and after that, we will say or we will ask what is still to be done. I know our efforts are not yet enough. Okay, our efforts are not that much yet. We need to do more, right? Then you can go back to how should it be again. And since it is a cycle, an ending until we get the best, until we get the best. And another model that we need to consider is the SAMR model uh, by Dr. Robin Puentidora. So we can see here two, like enhancement and transformation. And for the S, it stands for substitution, like technology acts as a direct substitute with no functional change. So these days, like for example, if we uh, cannot have that face-to-face -face interaction with our learners, so we can substitute it with technology, uh, not, just, uh, not just limited to distance learning online, but we can also have possibly the blended learning, or we can use the modular instruction, the TV and the radio broadcast, and some other preparations and I'm so glad that the Department of Education have been enhancing the DepEd Commons. Yes, I appreciate all the efforts, uh, especially the EdTech unit, all right? And some other people behind the, uh, the initiative just to uh, fill the gap of this, uh, uh, of this pandemic that we are facing right now. 
Then again, S for substitution, then A for augmentation. So substitution and augmentation uh, belongs to the enhancement. So for the augmentation, technology acts as direct substitute with functional improvement. Wow. So it helps. Okay. It bridges. And with that, since it is functional, we can assure transformation. So the first uh, part of transformation is letter M or modification, uh, in which technology allows for significant task or we need to redesign, something like that, okay? So we need to adjust. So everything is not static this time. Possible changes might happen, all right? Then for our redefinition, in which technology allows for the creation of new tasks, previously inconceivable, okay? Previously inconceivable. Now, these models are very uh, popular. These are international thought, but I'm so proud that one of the master teacher in Palo National High School. Uh, hello, Sir Ernani, Dr. Ernani Fernandez of Palo National High School. I'm so proud of you because I, in fact, I utilize your Project P21 ICT model for LAC this time for local. Okay, this is. Uh, I considered a local offer about ICT model. So I'm so grateful to Sir Hernani or Dr. Hernani Fernandez. Uh, he's a very able educator, uh, Metrobank awardee. He's also went to some uh, countries to represent Microsoft for education exchange and some other uh, representations, especially in the Senate in our country. Yes, just for this project P21. So with this model, okay, we can have that, uh, we can consider that project-based learning is crucial these days, especially when we talk about ICT integration, as we can see that in the KRA of the teachers in our COT, Right, I know you are very familiar with your uh, COT, especially for the deaf ed teachers. So for private teachers, maybe they don't have that. Then we need also to have this highly structured learning. Yes, and with that 21st century skills program, okay, these things will be uh, enhanced. This model is very crucial, especially for our learning uh, action cell in our respective schools. Then this ICT integration program for transformation level of uh, technology integration. Yes, this is very awesome. This is very useful. Yes. Then ICT advancement program for competent teachers. We are aiming to become competent teachers. Right now we are still in proficient teachers. All right. If you are going to have that uh, RPMS and the KRA of our uh, IPCRF, all right? So once again, I would like to recognize and I'm very grateful to Dr. Ernani Fernandez for this Project P21 ICT model for LAP. Now, another thing that we need to consider is the 21st century learning design. So yes, it does not happen by magic. 21st century learning design does not happen by magic, okay? Now, I would like to recognize also uh, the principal of Crescent Girls School Singapore, Chen Ki Tan, for uh, having this technology trends for education. So uh, here uh, we can see that collaborative knowledge creation is vital. Okay, then learning and creation on the go, active learning. So our devices are needed in this activity especially the smartphones. These days, parents have problems with their kids because most of their time are on screen playing mobile games, mobile legends, and some other uh, activities to be done online. Some are very busy with their TikTok, with their Face app, all right, and some other trending activities uh, in social media, okay? But 
um, we are trying to divert instead of focusing on those and vital activities, why not utilize those available resources for teaching and learning purposes, all right? So another thing that we need to consider is the bite-sized information and the gamification. So these days, game-based activities are very uh, trending because it, uh, it, has, it gives immediate feedback and engaging. It, this is very engaging on the part of the learners. Then we also have pervasiveness of smartphones. Yes, even ordinary kids these days, they own their smartphone as early as five years old, six years old, and above. So let's give them another opportunities on how to use these devices. Then cloud computing. Okay, this is for adults. Social media, how do we handle our social media? Then use a big data. All right, so these are just some of the 21st century learning by design. Then this one for the motto, okay? So why we need to have this motto? Actually, one of the part of this activity this afternoon, we need to have that commitment or pledge uh, in teaching with technology, all right? So for the motto, I borrowed these lines from Brian Herbert. The capacity to learn is a gift. The ability to learn is a skill. And the willingness to learn is a choice. Yes, learning is a choice. And I appreciate everyone, okay, for choosing to be part of us this morning. All right. And this one. I want to uh, have this one. This is my personal motto, but hopefully I, I would like you to also have this like again as what i have said earlier this is not by my own mind and everything i do i did not claim anything that i did it because i'm great i'm smart no it's not that okay i can do all things through christ which strengtheneth me there's someone behind me uh, someone who gives me the wisdom all right so uh Recognizing our almighty is foremost, very crucial for us to have this one, especially in this pandemic times. Now, we're done with the vital requirements, okay, to have that effective teaching with technology. First, we have mindset, model, and motto. So it's easy for you to remember, remember because the three words uh, start with letter M. Again, the vital requirements for effective teaching with technology, mindset, model, and motto. Now, let's move now on the WH questions, okay? Commonly asked question like, what is technology? What is teaching with technology? Who are the 21st century teachers? Are you 21st century teachers? Am I 21st century teachers? Well, let's answer that in a while. Why technology essential to 21st century education? Have you ever asked that? Why? Why technology essential? All right. Why there's a need for digital citizenship? Are you a digital citizen? Check your a Facebook account. Check your Twitter account. Okay, check your Instagram. Can you say that you are a digital citizen? Okay, so again, the question is why there is a need for digital citizenship. And how to design learning activity with a rubrics to ensure ICT integration. Okay, anchored to the 21st century learning. Okay, now, Let's have first this activity. Okay, so again, with the use of your um, laptop or your mobile phone, okay, go to www.menti.com and use the code 300253. All right, again, if you're using a laptop, Okay, go to your browser. You can split screen. 
or if you're using the mobile phone, go to www.menti.com and use the code 300253. The same code, what you, uh, what you have completed uh, a while ago. So choose a topic to define. So I want to know uh, your definition of technology, teaching with technology, 21st century teacher, digital citizenship or ICT integration. Just select one topic. If you want to define digital citizenship, go for it. If you want to define 21st century teacher, go for it. If you want to define technology, yes, you answer for that. Now, if I have this kind of activity with my learners, I always uh, add in the instruction like answer in a component. I will not ask you to do that. You have the freedom to express. All right. So let me go to the uh, actual actual page for this activity. So in the first activity that you're having, 619 responses here. Now let me check the second slide. Okay. So far, no respondent yes yet with this. So... Again, everyone, please go to www.menti.com and use the code 300253. So all you have to do, choose a topic to define. So yes, teaching with technology. <laughs> but is that a definition? All right. So, oh, choose a topic to define. That means to say you will define what is, uh, if you choose teaching with technology, what is teaching with technology for you? Okay. Or what is digital citizenship with you? Okay. So here I can see uh, respond here. Uh, yes. Okay. Again, you need to define, choose a topic to define. You need to give a definition. You, you will not just select a topic, but define it as well. So I can see here ability to use ICT in teaching. So teaching, meaning to say may, uh, maybe the thought of the participant is teaching with technology is the ability to use ICT in the teaching learning system. Yes. All right. Keep coming. I can see here ICT integration is using technology in teaching. All right. How about the others? Right now, I have 81 respondents, 86. Okay. I'm sorry if I were not able to elaborate that you need to define the topic you choose. So 21st century teachers are teachers that are innovative and flexible. Wow. I agree with this. Like, uh, if you are a 21st century teacher, you are and innovative and flexible. So meaning to say it's easy for you to adapt to some changes for the common good of our learners. All right, thank you so much for that. Okay. All right. So let me move this one. All right, so more responses, please. Okay, again, you need to give your definition. Okay, like, for example, technology is teaching with technology is, uh, please give the definition. Or what is the meaning to you when you hear the word digital citizenship or ICT integration? Right. Yes, yes, 232 respondents this time. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Right, thank you so much. Let me refresh the page. Yes, 287 respondents, 290 this time. Okay. <laughs> Technology teaching with technology. Ability to use ICT in teaching. All right, so we might have different definition to technology. We might have 
different definition when it comes to teaching with technology. Or you might have different definition with 21st century teacher. Or we might have different in term, uh, definition with digital citizenship. All right. Thank you so much for your responses. Okay, so here, uh -huh. most of you just select a topic, but there was no definition. That's okay, I understand. Uh, yes, yes. Right. <clears throat> All right, so most of you teach, okay, teaching and a new normal, yes. Actually, uh, in previous years, okay, teaching with technology is really popular already, okay. In fact, this is one of the advocacy that we are having in Microsoft Education. Uh, way back, I started in Microsoft Education in the year uh, 2016, yes. So the first learning path that I completed in Microsoft Education Center was teaching with technology. Uh, yes. So here, uh, ICT integration is using technology in teaching. Okay. But the question is, who will use the technology? Is it just the teacher? Okay. ICT integration is using technology in teaching. Yes. Hmm. 21st century teacher. Okay, here. Teaching integrated with technology. Yes, I can see here. The definition of technology is science or knowledge put into practice, used to solve problems or invent useful tools. Yes, that's correct. Another here. Digital citizenship, you are capable as using social media. Okay. So in your end, as educators, you can also use this, this platform to get the ideas of your learners. Or if you're a trainer, you can use this platform to get the ideas of your participants. Okay. Teaching with technology using tech, what's this, technology. Okay, technology is the application of scientific knowledge for practical purposes, especially in industry advances in computer technology. Then a 21st century teacher is able to adapt to whatever comes their way. Wow. So are you a 21st century teacher? New normal system of education. Okay. Teaching beyond borders. Yes, I love this line. This is also my, one of my popular lines. Teaching beyond borders or borderless classroom. Then... I can see here like uh, ICT integration, teaching with technology, blended learning. Then technology is powerful tool in teaching. Yes. So just imagine without technology, we cannot connect each other this morning. Technology is that science or knowledge to put into practice, used to solve problems. Okay. Now, how to be a successful 21st century teacher? Yes. We need to answer that. Technology is a manner of accomplishing a task, especially using technical processes, methods, or knowledge. Okay. So if you utilize this platform for your learners, okay, you can have the gist on how far have they understand a certain topic is. If you will use it, in your motivation part or presentation part, but you can also use this one for assessment or evaluation. Okay. Then if you will use this platform, you can also assess the skills, the grammatical skills of your learners. If you let them use English language, for example, if you're using, uh, if you are teaching uh, a language subject, for example, so again, it will accept not just English language, but it will also accept Filipino or any mother tongue language. 
You can try there. You can use another language. ICT integration is integrating or using technology in teaching. Yes. Then digital citizenship has the knowledge and skills to effectively use digital technologies to communicate with others. Yes. Okay, see, you have varied ideas. Okay, I know um, some of you can go to Google or some other search engine, for example, to copy paste an idea. That would be fine as long as we understand it. But uh, of course, uh, sometimes we need to define something in our own words. Okay, now here, another respond like, ICT integration is the use of ICT to supplement in teaching and learning process. Then digital citizenship is the new word to describe the people using the social media to validate their existence and identity. Wow, D different uh, definition. Then here, 21st century teacher is collaborative, open-minded, and has rough mindset. Oh, okay, yes. The definition of technology is science. Okay, I have seen this one many times already. Okay. Technology as a tool for education. Yes. There are some uh, technology tools for education. Teaching with a heart. Yes. This is what we need. All right. Especially in reaching out the learners. So, um, as educators, we need to have this mindset, like, uh, like for example, um, our learners these days cannot connect or there's no way for them to get the resources. So what can we do? What are we willing to do to reach them out for them to not be left behind? Because our main goal here is no child left behind and achievement for all, okay? Achievement for all amidst the crisis, amidst the challenges that we are facing right now. So here, digital citizenship is about confident and positive engagement with digital technologies. ICT integration is modern tools to augment reality, facilitate learning, yes. 21st century teacher is a teacher who has the skills and knowledge in using technology in her teaching. Wow, so you have a lot of ideas already. I know you have been using ICT in your teaching, but sometimes we need to be reminded. We need to be augmented, all right? So thank you so much for your responses. I cannot read you all. Right now I have 679 responses. Thank you so much for your participation, okay? So another here. Digital citizenship is about roles and responsibilities of a person in a cyber world. And I know you have a lot of ideas already, but I need to go back to my slide. Okay. All right. So we're done with this activity. And if you want to continue, you can submit your response. So let me have this, the, uh, the first question, sorry. What is technology? Okay. So these are one of the question of Project Teach, uh, Project Teach Tech, okay? So technology is a use and knowledge of tools and crafts and how these tools affect our ability to control and adapt to the environment. So technology can be a very good tool for us to, uh, for us to be able to connect to what is, uh, being uh, required to us, especially these days as educators, okay? Do we have the knowledge and how to use the available resources that DepEd might be giving to us? Yes. So how about if we have that, uh, we have only that smartphone or we have only that uh, basic fo phone, like example, our basic phone, phone is able only for a call and text, okay? Can we utilize it or not? Yes, puede. You can reach out your learners by texting, okay, by calling, or 
uh, my only available resource is just my bicycle. Uh, it's still a tool. It's, it's still a tool. I mean, that is just a product, also one of the product of technology. So why not use that bicycle to reach out your learners by giving them worksheets, activity sheets, or what I'm having at home is just a radio, the portable radio, or the TV, the old TV, but it's still working. All right, so it's still uh, possible to be utilized for teaching and learning, all right? Oh, I don't have internet connection. That means to say it's impossible for me to connect to my students, okay? Is that correct? Of course, again, when we talk about technology, it's the use and knowledge of tools and crafts. So what if you have your internet connection? You have a lot of devices, everything is provided, but you don't know how to utilize it. So it's a very sad story. It's a very frustrating story. But if only we are very willing to learn, yes, we can maximize those tools for us to be effective and reaching out our learners in different ways, okay? Again, we are not focusing here for teaching uh, distance learning online, but uh, for the common good of our learners, okay? We need to use technology for uh, achieving achievement for all or no child left behind. No learner must be left behind. Now, who are the 21st century teachers? Are you a 21st century teacher? Am I a 21st century teacher? Well, let's have that one. Now, a 21st century teacher looks forward to the future. Okay? Looks forward to the future. So with that, a uh, 21st century teacher must be tech savvy, okay? So what is being tech savvy, okay? So that means to say a 21st century teacher does not have to have a class of tablets in every child's hand. We don't need uh, our learners to have one tablet each or one smartphone each or one laptop each or one desktop, okay? No. Yes, we need to look forward to the future. We need to be a tech savvy, but a tech savvy 21st century teacher can have a nice balance of education tools, not just in our classroom, in the, but also in every setting or in uh, every aspect of our teaching endeavors, all right? So if you're a tech savvy, you must not be dependent on the available tools. So I, I have a concrete experience for this. Like uh, I have been uh, advocating teaching with technology in the classroom way back 2016 until last year. So the reality in public school, there are no available resources in which there's a ratio of one to one, like one tablet or one smartphone or one laptop among my students, but I want to have, I want to utilize technology. So like, for example, uh, I want them to experience the Kahoot, okay? So in Kahoot, that it, for example. So that's a game-based uh, assessment activity. So with that, I, uh, the only device that I'm having in my classroom is my smartphone and my laptop. And we have that LED TV. So we are blessed enough because we have LED TV in the classroom. So, but supposedly in doing the Kahoot game, every child must have a device, but it's impossible, okay? It's very impossible. So what I did, I started a Kahoot game using my mobile phone just to enter the pin, okay? Just to enter the pin. Then with that, if there's one player that can join, uh, you can start the, the game already. So what I did, I let my learners use their notebook, okay, their physical notebook, where to answer, where to write their answer. Then, of course, there's a timer in Kahoot, like 20 seconds. Okay, for that 20 seconds, uh, before the time ends, like five seconds before the time ends, they need to raise their notebook. Okay, so that means to say they already answered. And after that, we will check it together. So... With that kind of with that kind of adjustment, 
I able to let my learners uh, be engaged with the activity in the classroom uh, with the use of one smartphone and uh, laptop and LED TV, which is the activity supposedly requires uh, one device for each participant. But we tried to be resourceful. Okay, we, I know you, you are innovative educators, so you can do that as well. So that is just an example. Okay, do we look forward to the future as tech savvy teacher? Then, as 21st century teachers, we need to be aware of the ever changing trends in technology and are in tune of what the future may bring to education. So, in this situation that we are in, we are facing crisis, but we are so blessed. Okay, uh, why? Because there are some free webinars available online provided by different uh, departments. Okay, and it's for free. And I remember last week, okay, it became trending in the uh, social media and the uh, news pages, the activity done by the, uh, yeah, at ETU um, for Region 11 teachers and their webinars when, uh, since the teachers are very willing to attend the seminars, they, they bring their tent with them in the, along the highway in the streets. They gather there to, just to join the webinar because that's the only spot in their area where the internet connection is available. So it's something like that. Okay? I appreciate teachers who are very willing to learn. Okay? And uh, with that, they will be informed with the ever-changing trends and technology. So, and aside from this one, uh, 21st century teachers needs to know how to collaborate. Okay, do you know how to collaborate? Yes, you are there in Manila, Visaya, some parts of Visaya, some parts of Mindanao, but we can work together with the use of technology. Okay, so how do we collaborate? So working with others is an important 21st century skill. Collaboration is a skill. To collaborate is not that easy, but if you master how to collaborate, your life will, you know, will become easier. Your work uh, makes it uh, fun. Okay, working is fun. Learning is fun if you know how to collaborate well. Okay, no man is an island. We need each other. There are things that we do not know, but we can crowdsource. Okay, if you know how to collaborate, we can crowdsource and we can get the information we needed. So learning is deemed to be more effective when you can share your ideas and knowledge with others. So sharing your expertise and, and experience, communicating and learning. So we need each other. This is not just a one man show, but we need to collaborate. One Dev Ed, one Filipinas, all right? So one 21st century teachers of the Philippines. And third, aware of the career opportunities that you will be, that will be in the coming years. Again, aware of the career opportunities that will be in the coming years, okay? So with that, we need to be adaptive. How? How do we adapt? So the 21st century teacher is able to look at their practices and adapt based on the needs of their students. Are we, uh, are we aware what modalities, uh, what learning delivery modalities our learners are choosing? So in our case, in our division, we are done on the survey uh, about the learning modalities that our learners would like to enjoy if the class classes start on August 24. So that's why the uh, authorities are now finding ways on how to meet the uh, resources or the instructional materials for our learners. I know you have that also in your area. So thank you so much for that. Uh, we need to be grateful because we have a workaholic people in our department. 
and they must be able to adapt to the, to the curriculum. Yes, we need to adapt to the curriculum. And we are so grateful also to the central office for giving us the most essential learning competencies. Okay, so thank you so much. And we recognize the people behind, uh, to all the people working behind and providing us the most essential learning competencies. Then with that, we need to be also a lifelong learner as 21st century teachers. And again, not just lifelong learner, but also life-wide learner. So the 21st century teacher is a lifelong learner. We don't just expect that students to be lifelong learners, but they to stay current on top of what's new in education. Okay, we need to be aware on what's new, what's trending so that we can adjust. Okay, okay. Now, um, with that, if you are a 21st century teacher, we need also to be an advocate to it. Okay, we need to advocate. We need to have this advocacy. So we need to say, uh, I am very grateful uh, to the administrator of this 21st century version two page in Facebook and available also in YouTube because I know that person very well. I know her heart on how she advocates about teaching with technology, basically anchored to 21st century learning. Uh, I saw the efforts and fact he let uh, that person let all of us utilize her, her or his instructional materials uh, online for free. So that's how amazing if all of us will contribute for the common good of our educators and learners, uh, there will be uh, there will be uh, the best one Filipinas, one DepEd. So again, we need to be grateful for that. Then the 21st century teacher is advocating towards forward thinking and planning, okay? To ensure all students will not be left behind. Yes, let's make sure that no students will be left behind. So I always remember that uh, this is for achievement for all. This initiative encourage achievement for all. So we need to help each other, okay? So with that, as 21st century teacher, uh, I would like to recognize also the source of this uh, information from Rice Filipinas again of Microsoft uh, Virtual Summit last June 10, 2020. So digital transformation requires new skill. So for us educators, we need to be aware with this, like tech skills gap expected to cost global economy. So by the year 2020, okay, it, we need $160 billion for this. And just imagine 6.2 million job openings in cloud-based technologies by the year 2022. That's few years from now because we're already in uh, 2020. So two years from now. So cloud-based technologies. Now, but the question is, are we preparing our learners to adapt to this trend? Okay. And some other information like 77% of jobs will require technology skills by 2030. 71% of STEM jobs are in technology, yet only 8% of STEM graduates feel that demand. So we need to encourage some learners to go for STEM jobs, all right? Then just imagine 42%, only 42% of employers believe that new graduates are prepared for the workforce. Isn't this frustrating to us educators? All right, so 42% is uh, very low, right? Now, 
Another thing here, 85 million shortfall of high and middle skilled workers. 74% of current employer, employees report needing to train for jobs and the future, especially now in the situation that we are having. A lot of people are jobless, okay? So we need to be aware that we need to do something. Then only 3% of all undergraduate degrees in the US are in computer science and only 18% of those are women. All right, so again, this is a challenge to all of us to be aware of this digital transformation, okay? That we need to develop skills among our learners for them to, um, to have a better career, especially those career that uh, in demand in the future. So if you are a 21st century teacher, you can do more for your learners this year. Now, another question that we need to answer, why technology essential to 21st century education? First, transform, uh, I mean, technology transforms the classroom experience from a classic teacher-centered. Okay, before, um, only the teacher is the main actor or main actress inside the classroom. Okay, but gone are those days. Gone are those days. Because this time, we need to have the student-centered experience. Even in a, if we are handling virtual or online classes, uh, I tell you, our learners are very competent. Our learners are very able as long as we guide them properly. Okay, so uh, the challenge is in our hands, how to guide our learners to maximize their potential so that with the use of technology, our learning sessions will become student-centered. Then, why technology is essential to 21st century education? Second, access to a variety of educational resources that inspire creativity, critical thinking, communication, and collaboration. These four C's are very important, okay? So without technology, it's so hard for the learners, for the teachers to have access to this variety of educational resources. But with the technology that we are having right now, especially if we have strong internet connection, okay, creativity will be uh, upskilled. Of course, critical thinking will be developed more and communication will become easier and collaboration will be um, in hands, okay, in the hands of a 21st century teacher. So are you willing to grab this challenge? All right, now it promotes inclusion and the development of digital literacy skills. Yes, inclusive education is very important and I'm very grateful that Microsoft also is advocating this one, the inclusive education. So uh, with the use of technology, I can say that uh, no learner will be left behind if the educator knows how to utilize the available resources to our learners. Then it extends learning beyond the text and beyond the classroom walls. Yes, just imagine you are in one part of the country, but you can reach out other people, not just locally, but also globally. So that's how powerful technology is if we know how to utilize it. Then third, it ultimately exposes students and teachers to a new online global communities. This in turn promotes a global awareness, which is an essential component to a 21st century education. That means to say, if you are a 21st century education, okay, your thought, your vision is for global, uh, global uh, scenes, okay? And with that, we can make it happen. 
So to those who have started to think globally, collaborate globally, congratulations. Please continue it, keep it up. But for those who have not started yet, you can start today or tomorrow or next day. Just think it's just a matter of initiating or starting something. Now, why technology essential to 21st century education for letter C? Through the use of instructional technology, differentiated instruction can be made much easier. It can become more of a reality. And this is very evident in our classroom. If we know how to utilize instructional technology, differentiated instruction would be very relevant in the lives of our learners. So this provides students access to very rich learning materials outside of the classroom. So if you have internet connection, you have devices, uh, your learners uh, can be informed and they can go beyond what we expect from them. So uh, especially those learners who have who are working uh, projects uh, like science investigatory projects, uh, research, especially for senior high schools, not just for senior high school, but also for uh, junior high school, even in elementary. So our elementary students are, have started also working with their investigatory projects or research, any form of research. It's up on the teacher and how to stimulate and how to motivate and how to guide their learners. Now, another thing that we need to consider is students use tools that we would best prepare them for their future academic and professional experiences. This includes a blend of new tech and old tech. All right. So uh, don't say that I'm handling elementary. It's very impossible for them to use technology uh, independently. No. By the way, my fellow educators, this is not a one-man show again. So in our case now, especially in this new normal, we need to top our parents. This is not just a school activity, but home school partnership. We need to connect to our parents. We need the assistance of our parents. Why? They're the one who guide their kids, especially for lower level learners. Okay, they're the one who provides devices if, uh, as needed for internet connection. So we need the parent support. Okay, so our best stakeholders actually are parents. If you know how to tap your parents, not just parents, uh, but also our LGU, the local government unit, uh, local officials, our mayor, our barangay captain, our uh, counselors at any levels, they can be a big help to all of us if we know how to connect to them. Not just them, but also we can connect to private individuals. All right, so the bayanihan of DepEd is very crucial, not just for DepEd, even with private schools. We can also find your own stakeholders, like connecting to private companies available in your local areas. So again, I believe that if we are a 21st century teacher, okay, we should allow or we should engage our students to use tools that will best prepare them for their future academic and professional experiences. All right. Now, what is digital citizenship? Is this a need? Okay. When we talk about digital citizenship, it is the continuously developing norms of appropriate, responsible, and empowered technology use. So these days, um, TikTok and FaceApp are very trending, they're very popular. So if you are utilizing that, can you qualify yourself as a digital citizen? Okay, let's answer that question. All right. So why there is a need for digital citizenship? First, to lead and assist others in builders in building positive digital experiences. Yes, so uh, for us educators,
okay, um, sometimes we use book and sometimes we add our students, they can see our post, they can see everything there in our social media, but we need to be careful. Are we giving good example? Are we role models to them? Or we have that unbecoming post or unbecoming um, uh, shared post in our social media. That's one thing that we need to consider. Okay. Another thing why there's a need for digital citizenship is that to recognize that our actions have consequences to others. Yes, we have the right to express our ideas, our opinions, but uh, we have that too much liberty since we are public servants and we have uh, we have learners following us and we have our parents as well. So uh, this is a wake up call also to all of us to be a digital citizen, all right? Later, we will go farther, the kinds or the elements of this digital citizenship. And I would like to say hi to Miss Mary Sheras. Yes, hi, Miss Mary and CDO, DepEd CDO this time the best princess before. I thank you so much because I learned much from you about digital citizenship. Uh, this is your advocacy and I believe in your advocacy as well. Now, for this digital citizenship, another reason why there's a need for this is to participate in a manner for the common good. Yes, for the common good of the Filipino people, okay, wherever they are in the country. Now, the first element of digital citizenship in education, again, we're focusing on education. The first one is digital access. Now, what's this digital access? So as educators, we need to provide options for lessons and data collection, such as free access in the community or provide resources for the home. So we are so blessed that the Department of Education um, work hard for the Depth Ed Common, especially uh, last, uh, no, no, yeah, last March, end of March, they tried their best to launch the Depth Ed Common. Uh, yes, not that ready that time, but they are very willing to pave the way for the learners to have review materials for the fourth quarter. So I appreciate them. I salute them for that. And that's one example of digital access. And now, they're trying to improve the Depth Ed Commons and I saw there are some improvements. There are some available resources that uh, public school students, private school students, private school teachers, pri public school teachers and even parents can access that one as long as you have your school ID uh, with you. Thank you so much Depth Ed for that. Now, another element of digital citizenship in education is digital commerce. What do you mean by digital commerce? Educators need to provide options for lessons and data collection, such as free access in the community or provide resources for the home. Okay, oh, sorry, yes. Then we have also digital communication and collaboration. So for students struggling to understand their place in the world, Technology can help them find their own voices and express themselves. Uh, I have observed this one like uh, in my classroom setting this school year, I have at least three students who are very uh, quiet in the classroom. Uh, they are, you know, they are shy enough to express their ideas, though I know they're smart kids. They have ideas. They are very good when it comes to output. But when it comes to self-expression, they have that hesitation. But when I conducted my online classes since April until now, I am very impressed because those kids who are not that active, especially in expressing themselves inside the classroom, in the virtual classroom, they are the one who excel in my online classes. So that means to say there are, okay, there are kids who can express more. They're very willing to give their voices an online platform, all right? So, so I am glad that they have improved a lot. So with the use of digital communication and collaboration, they also see their potential 
okay they discover their abilities uh, with the use of online platform right then another thing another element of digital citizenship is digi digital etiquette so digital etiquette or commonly known as net ticket okay digital etiquette or popularly known as net ticket this is an electronic standards of conduct or procedures and has to do with the process of thinking about others when using digital devices. So, of course, we need to have that etiquette and using the uh, online platform. Like, for example, uh, I always remind that like, you should not use caps lock, for example, in sending messages because it seems that you are shouting at that person, okay? Yes, sometimes you just want to emphasize that word, okay? But sometimes they will misinterpret like you are shouting at them. So that's one of the digital etiquette or net etiquette and some other things that we need to consider. Then teachers can include digital, digital etiquette as part of the classroom rules, not just in the classroom, uh, actual classroom setting, but also virtual classroom activities or academic goals. Whether in the classroom or online, you should be aware of others as, an, uh, as having an important idea for everyone. Okay, we need to listen. Okay, let's not be self-centered. Okay, we don't know everything. Let's learn how to listen. Listen, okay? Another thing, digital health and welfare refers to the physical and psychological well-being in the digital world. So another aspect that we need to consider in having this new normal, it's somewhat risky to our health because our kids, the teachers are exposed to uh, radiation somehow, all right? So educators, especially in one is to one school or classroom need to ask the question of how much screen time is appropriate for students. So earlier I have heard that for public schools, uh, we will be only allowed two hours a day for example, for actual online learning, distance learning online. But I got this uh, suggested Anyway, again, this is just a suggested on-screen time, okay, from the planning for flexible learning. Uh, from I, I need to read a source: Education Imperative for the New Normal, based on the guidelines of the American Pediatric Association. So the suggested screen time for early grades, like pre-school and regard 10 to grade three, uh, minimum 30 minutes a day, maximum of 45 minutes a day. I don't know if uh, DepEd or private school will adapt this one, but early, uh, I think that was last week, I was informed two hours a day, but for the suggested screen time from the American Pediatric Association, so for kindergarten or preschool to grade three, maximum of 45 minutes. Then for grades four to six, maximum of one hour. Oh yeah, I'm having online classes with my grades four to six every night. So we have one hour per meeting. So that's good for them. Then for grades seven to 10, one hour minimum, maximum of one and a half hours. Then for grades 11 to 12, minimum of one hour, maximum of two hours. For college level, minimum of two hours, maximum of three hours. All right, I hope, uh, I, I'm not sure if this will be implemented. Anyway, this is just a suggested on screen time from the American Pediatric Association, but we will wait for the guidelines from the Department of Education or from Chad or from uh, people concerned about this one. So let's just wait for the official announcement or official guidelines for that, all right. Then another element for digital citizenship is that digital law. This refers to the electronic responsibility for actions and deeds and has to do with the creation of rules 
and policy that address issues related to the online world. So I know our authorities are trying to have that policies, uh, uh, guidelines, rules and regulations for the new normal. And this law, this digital law or digital policy, for example, the goal for this is to protect those using these digital devices from harm. So it's for our own good. Then to support for issues such as cyberbullying and sexting. Okay, we need to protect our learners. Um, strictly no bullying in cyber world as much as possible. So we need to be careful with our learners. Then another thing that we need to consider, digital rights and responsibility. Okay, are those requirements and freedoms extended to everyone in a digital world? So how? Helping students understand that when they are provided opportunities such as the access to the internet and use of online products, they need to be diligent in helping others as well. Okay, we need to teach our learners and how to be responsible digital citizens. So it's now in the hands of the educators, this away with the parents. So we need strong partnership this time with school and home uh, adults. Okay, we need to help each other. Then in coming adults of potential uh, problems, we need to be aware for the possible incoming problems with our learners, especially those who are having communication and classes online. Yes, even for those who are utilizing modules as well, there are some issues to be considered uh, in that area. Then educators must help students understand that protecting others both online and in the real world are essential skills to have. Yes, dapat makatao tayo. Okay, makatao at makabayan. We need each other. We need to protect each other, not just in the offline world, but as well in online setting. Then in digital citizenship, another element is security and privacy. So it is an electronic precautions to guarantee safety. So we need to take good care of our username, our password, Okay, please don't share your password. And we're so blessed, uh, teachers from DepEd, because the Department of Education paid or subscribed for us with our Office 365 account. Yes, we can utilize that. We can uh, sign that up in several devices for our use, for us to be uh, effective in our uh, teaching and learning activities. But let's make sure to protect our username and password. Let's not share it to anyone, all right? So let's be careful with that. Let's be a responsible user. Then viruses, worms, and other boots can be passed along from one system to another, just like an illness. So if we are scared of the virus, uh, COVID-19, our devices also are prone to viruses and worms. So we need to take good care of them as well. So when using devices in school or at home, understanding and being aware of attacks and how to prevent them are important skills for today and into the future. So how to design learning activity rubrics to ensure ICT integration? This is the last one, okay? Now, I would like you to bring to... Uh, I would like to recognize Microsoft partners in learning. This 21st century learning design is very uh, good for me on how to design 21st learning activity rubrics. So we will have this one. This is in PDF file. All right. So in having our 21st century learning design rubrics, okay. Now, educators globally are working to design new models of learning that better prepare learners for life and work in 21st century. The purpose of the 21st century learning design rubrics 
is to help educators. So this is for us, okay? This is for us to identify and understand the opportunities that learning activities give students to build 21st century skills, okay? Let's visit our rubrics. Is it aligned with the 21st century learning design? Okay, let's check it later. So in this learning activity, okay, in this learning activity, it is any task that students do as part of their school-related work. Again, it must be part of the school-related work. It can be an exercise that students complete in one class period. For example, you have a 40 class uh, or one hour class or an extended project that takes place both in and outside of school. So this guide describes six rubrics of 21st century learning. So what are the six rubrics of 21st century learning? Okay, first we have rubrics for collaboration. Okay, another rubrics for knowledge construction. Okay, rubrics for self-regulation. Rubrics for real-world problem solving and innovation. Rubrics for the use of ICT for learning. And rubrics for the skilled communication. Because we let our kids do a lot of activities, but we we're not able to guide them properly with the rubrics. So hopefully these rubrics can help us, okay? So the first thing that we need to focus is the collaboration, okay? Are students required to share responsibility and make substantive uh, decision with other people? Is their work independent? We need to ask this question as 21st century educators. Right. So again, if you are trying to give a collaboration activities to the learners, ask the questions, are students required to share responsibility and make substantive decision with other people or is their work independent? So with that, we can have the overview. Okay, we don't need to read that one by one. But in this rubric, we need to assure that students are working with others on the learning activity, okay? This is a very good opportunity for them to experience that we need each other, okay? Two heads or more heads are better than one. Again, two or more heads are better than one. That's why we need to let our learners have a collaborative activities. So at higher levels of the rubric, students have shared responsibility, okay? Then student requires to make substantive division, uh, decisions together. They need to be allowed to make decision whether the decision is uh, wrong or correct. So with that, they will be able to face the consequences of their decision, okay? Then for big ideas, students work together when the activity requires them to work in pairs or groups. So it's up to the 21st century teacher on how to uh, give the activity. Is this for pair or for group? So let them discuss an issue. You will give a certain issue. Then let them solve that issue and let them create a product. Okay. So, for example, the problem that we're facing right now is all about COVID-19. Of course, uh, that, that is just an example, okay? Then, how can you solve the problem? Okay, then can you create a product to enhance the immune system of the Filipino people, for example? All right. Then, with that, uh, student work in pairs, for example, you have this uh you will give this um, instruction like student work in pairs or group might also include people from outside the classroom such as student in other class or school so you can uh you can give them um, what do you call that one you can give them 
activities like or chances to work together face to face or by using technology to share ideas or resources. So let them answer, is this working together? Is this working together? So if yes, pairs of students give each other feedback. Then a small group discusses an issue together or a student uses Microsoft link or Skype to interview a student in another town via the internet. So that's, this is just an example. But if the answer is no, students do their work alone or a whole class discusses an issue. Cool. All right, so it's up to the teacher. Now, another thing, students use OneNote to share their story, draft and give each other feedback. In my case, I able to let my students use Sway. They, they make their personal website in sway.com to share their story and give each other's feedback. Then each student, uh, if no, if the answer is no, they are not working together, each student creates his or her own story and sends it to the educator for feedback. Or they send it to the group, uh, group chat or group page, for example. So it's up to the teacher. Then students have shared responsibility when they work in pairs or group to develop a common product, design or response. So shared responsibility is more than simply helping each other. Students must collectively own the work and be mutually responsible for its outcome. So if the group work involves students or adults from outside the classroom, this qualifies a shared responsibility. So only if the students and the outside participants are mutually responsible for the outcome of the work. So you can also have this one. Anyway, this is just a sample. So uh, you have to answer the question, is this shared responsibility? So if yes, students conduct a lab experiment together. Students have joint responsibility for carrying out the lab experiment. So in my activities in the classroom, I let my students, for example, in a science investigatory project. So there, were, uh, there are learners who wants to work it by group. So if they do it by group, so there must be, uh, uh, what do you call that one? Um, a documentation. Who did the first part, second part, third part, something like that. Then if the answer is no, Students give each other feedback. So this activity structure implies that one student owns the work and the other is only helping. So we need to clarify that in making rubric. Then a student works, if yes, a student works with peer in another country, for example. So this is higher, especially for senior high school or junior high school student. A student works with a peer in another country to develop a joint website using Microsoft Office 365. Yes, uh, the good news in the Department of Education, uh, maybe one of these days, our students will be given a uh, uh, license Office 365 for students. So we are grateful that most of us uh, teachers have received already the license Office 365 account. So with that, our learners can also connect to not just for Filipino people, but for uh, their peers or other students outside our country. But if the answer is no, no shared responsibility, a student interviews a peer in another country about the local weather. This is a task that students conduct together, but they do not have mutual responsibility for its outcome. So I will not share everything about this one for uh, 21st century rubric for uh, 21st century learning because it's so long. Imagine this is 44 pages, but you can have an access of this uh, document, right? 21st century learning design. And this is available also in 21 CLD learning activity rubrics. It's available in Google, uh, even in Microsoft Education Center. And you can use this one. We can use this one for us to be an empowered 21st century teachers. And with that, if we know how to utilize this learning activity rubrics, we can guarantee ICT integration and we can ensure teaching with technology effectively. 
So I promised to end at 11 o'clock, but time check at 11.06. So it's time for us to stop and let's see each other uh, this two o'clock in the afternoon. So our session this afternoon uh, will start at two o'clock until four o'clock. So we have two focus topics this afternoon. So those are um, tools for education with the best practices and we need to have a commitment pledge uh, in having this teaching with technology. So I hope you have learned something this morning from nine o'clock until 11 o'clock about my topic. So thank you for listening, everyone. Once again, I'm Robilyn Cabardo Pastrano, uh, speaking here in 21st century learning.